Doom 2016, alongside Wolfenstein The New Order, proved that classic franchises still have their place in today's overly saturated first-person shooter landscape. And Doom's Ultra Nightmare mode proved that people still like FPSs that are brutally difficult. But what if you wanted a different sort of challenge? Can you beat Doom 2016 with only a pistol? Between you and me, viewer, I think you're smart enough to figure out what the point of this video is. But for those that require hand-holding, I'll explain it anyway. The challenge is to beat Doom by only using the pistol we get at the start of the game. And when I say by only using the pistol, I mean it. This isn't Pee Wee Herman Goes to Hell, this is a Mitten Squad video. And it wouldn't be a Mitten Squad video unless I made things harder than they need to be for no reason. Melee attacks are not allowed, and, with a few exceptions, glory kills are outlawed as well. Also, real quick, I'm not an expert on Doom. I tried to pay attention to the story, but believe it or not, I had more important things to focus on than the story. So if I make a mistake when talking about some aspect of the story, don't tear my head off about it. After waking up chained to a table, the first kill isn't with a pistol. Damn it. You know what, it's a glorified cutscene, it doesn't count. I got up, grabbed the pistol, and began my campaign of carnage. You can skip the first glory kill by killing the possessed before the pop-up appears. I'm just gonna say it now, the pistol sucks. It's the worst thing ever. But we do have a few things working in our favor. The first is that the pistol has unlimited ammo, and because of how weapons in Doom work, reloading is a non-issue. The second is that you can charge up the pistol to fire a more accurate and more damaging shot. The downside is that it takes a bit to charge up, and there's a cooldown period. Those of you with any Doom experience under your helmet may be thinking that I'm finding things a little difficult early on because I'm not playing the way you're supposed to. You should almost always be moving and jumping around to avoid enemies. Doom is a fast-paced game. It took me a little while to get a handle on how the game plays. Despite being locked away in a cursed sarcophagus waiting for my knight in shining armor to rescue me while all hell broke loose, literally, it falls on me to figure out why the demons have invaded Mars and how to stop them. My first stop was the resource ops building, and would you know it, there were demons in my way. Early on, I wasn't sure which was more effective, spamming the normal pistol shots or waiting for the charge shots. I mostly just spammed the trigger to slowly whittle away at an enemy's health. Even with the pistol though, the possessed aren't much of a threat. They're mostly just enemies you could kill to get a sense of power. After finding the blue keycard, I got access to grenades that I can't use. Earlier, I said that I wasn't going to use melee attacks because they're not the pistol. You may think that that mindset would also apply to explosive barrels, but I decided that it didn't. The way I see it is that a barrel is a part of the environment. It's like a demon falling off a cliff and dying. If you disagree, feel free to dislike the video, it won't hurt my feelings. I pushed onward, got a shotgun upgrade that means nothing to me, started to get more of a handle on this shooting while moving thing, entered the resource ops building, and beat the first level. So far this hasn't been too bad, but don't worry, things will go downhill soon enough. The second mission is a continuation of the first, and then I'm still tracking down the source of the demonic invasion. This mission, level, whatever you want to call it, introduces you to challenges things you can do in the mission to get more weapon upgrade points. Some can be done with a pistol, but most can't, so I didn't really pay much attention to them. Olivia Pierce revealed herself as the big bad of the game by sharing her evil plan. Not too long later, I discovered a hazard that I would need to avoid whenever possible. With an assortment of weapons at your disposal, getting pinned to a wall by a demon isn't that bad. You just switch to the shotgun and blow their fucking head off. With a pistol, that's not an option. It's a manageable problem now, because the demons are a joke. Later on though, it's pretty much a death sentence. Further into the level, I encountered the possessed engineers for the first time. They're the walking nuke of the Doom world, but I never found them to be much of a threat. I found another gore nest, tried to destroy it with my pistol, failed miserably, ripped its heart out, and began dealing with the demons that arrived. Nothing too crazy. I found the yellow keycard, found another worthless weapon upgrade, opened the pretty yellow door, found the heavy assault rifle, opened an airlock, and was back outside. Here, I found my first power-up, Berserk. For me, it does the opposite of what it's supposed to do. Instead of allowing me to do increased damage to demons with my fists, it leaves me vulnerable to enemy attacks because I can't attack them back. You already know why. I then made a nifty discovery. When your health is low, killing demons will make them drop health vials. Oh, and falling into the abyss kills you. 
because you don't get checkpoints until a fight is over, dying means you must restart the fight. This quickly goes from a slight inconvenience to a rage-inducing nightmare of a concept. Lots of fun things are introduced in this level, including the possessed security demons. Imagine a jackal from Halo 2, but instead of being an inbred alien turkey, it's a demon from hell. Whatever the strategy is for dealing with them, I wasn't smart enough to figure it out. After a bit of parkouring that ends up being a waste of time, I found another airlock, killed more demons, got my first Praetor suit upgrade token, approached the Vega terminal, upgraded my max health to 125, found out what caused the demons to arrive, and completed the second mission. The point of the third mission is to keep the foundry reactors from melting down and destroying everything. But first, the demons must be cleared from the area. There are four gore nests that must be destroyed. And because my IQ is similar to that of a 14-year-old block of cheese, I managed to get lost in this mission a few times. I had to rip off some dead guy's arm to get to the first gore nest. A new demon, the Hellraiser, is introduced here. They're pretty heavily armored, and they fire a laser-type shot from their hand. They can take a few headshots before staggering, and ranged attacks of any sort are a bitch when you've got half a dozen of them attacking you from different positions. Once I had another yellow keycard, a second new demon was introduced, Hell Knights. These bad boys are a bit much, to be honest. Their attacks aren't difficult to dodge, but they're big, tough, and fast. With a pistol that has yet to be upgraded in any way, they're time-consuming to kill. It's not all bad, though, because seconds later I could finally upgrade my pistol. There are effectively two different timers on the pistol, the charge-up timer and the cooldown timer. Two available upgrades reduce their respective timers. I opted to reduce the charge-up time first, which makes charge shots much more viable. The second Gornes battle was fought over multiple pits of lava. If you miss a jump or fall, you die. If nothing else, here I learned that demons can occasionally damage other demons. It's not a complete game changer, but it's an option to stuff into my utility pocket. The third gore nest fight was in a confined space, which I'm not a fan of. If nothing else, it forces you to get good at fighting demons while maneuvering around in a vertical space. I upgraded my pistol for the second time, which made the fourth gore nest easier than the third. And then came the first somewhat large-scale battle. Several Hell Knights, several Hell Razors, Imps, and Possessed. There was a lot of room to move around, which made dodging attacks relatively trivial. I finally met Olivia Pierce, who is just as much of a cunt in person as she is on video and DVD. Technology proved itself to be a fickle bitch, and Mission 3 is over. The fourth mission is all about shutting down the Argent Tower. There are three Argent filters that must be disabled. Shortly after the mission began, I found a rune trial for the first time. Maybe they were in a previous mission and I missed them, maybe they weren't. Either way, just like so many other things, these are largely worthless to me, despite the rewards being tantalizing. The rocket launcher I found also tickled my fancy, and the group of enemies immediately following its acquisition was tempting. Fun fact, walking into fire does damage. After spending 7 minutes clearing out an area, I got a new toy and used logic and technological know-how to disable the first filter. More demons, more platforming, a second filter was disabled, another gore nest was destroyed. The demons did a bit of team killing, I ventured inside a building, and disabled the third filter. The flying hell squid then made her presence known. She fires waves of energy, I guess, and can teleport, and can also spawn more demons. She's tenacious and agile, but not as tough as a hell knight. With her and her friends dead, I could finally get the third pistol upgrade, which removed the movement speed penalty that came from holding a charged shot. The last upgrade requires killing 15 demons with headshots. It might as well be asking me to put a circle in the circle hole and a square in the square hole. Pushing forward, I destroyed another gore nest, got a few of the required headshots, found another Praetor suit token, opened an airlock, destroyed the primary Argent Energy failsafe filter, and completed the fourth mission. The fifth mission, Argent Tower, is about platforming because that's what everyone wants in their first-person shooters these days. The Revenant is introduced almost immediately and is probably the most recognizable demon from Doom. It fires rockets from a harness and can hover in the air. It's also pretty weird to look at, but not as weird as that hamper with a dabbing unicorn on it I saw a few days ago. In addition to the Revenant, this mission also gives us the fabled double jump allowing us to fall to our death from heights that were previously impossible. After acquiring the double jump, there's a fair bit of time that passes before a proper firefight, primarily because the goal is to reach and scale a tower that looms in the distance. 
In the few fights I had on my way to the tower, I got my 15th headshot and made my pistol as powerful as it can possibly get. It's better than it was in the first mission, but it's still not great. I finally reached the base of the tower, saw Olivia again, and just barely missed the elevator. I must scale the tower the hard way. I also found out what the purple orb does after I killed all the demons in the area. Before I can really begin to scale the tower, I have to kill a mancubus. The way it's presented made me think it was some sort of a boss fight, but it's not. Like most of the other demons, the mancubus is a threat in close quarters situations. However, it's not much to worry about if you can keep your distance. It can fire back-to-back -back cannon shots from its arms. Unless you're shit at dodging projectiles, the mancubus is less of a hassle to take down than revenants or hell knights. I would later figure out that it takes 8 fully charged headshots to kill the mancubus. The arena was cleared, I got pushed out of the map, had to kill myself to reload a checkpoint, had another fight in a circular area, found another Argent cell to upgrade my max health, platformed my way up the tower, killed more stuff, climbed more stuff, and watched as Olivia ripped open a portal to hell, which resulted in quite a few demons trying to kill me. Luckily, a Category 3 dimensional event took place before they could succeed. If you're wondering how bad a Category 3 dimensional event is, it's worse than a Category 2 dimensional event, but not as bad as a Category 4 dimensional event. I was sucked into hell, and the mission was over. The sixth mission marks the halfway point of Doom 2016, numerically speaking. Grab a juice box and strap on your helmet, because we're going to hell. The objective here is simple, kill. Real quick, I know this is hell, pain, suffering, and torture aren't in short supply, but this is a pretty atmospheric place. I got a new gun, the Gauss Cannon. It's neat, but it's no pistol. Revenants, Hell Knights, Mancubuses, Imps, and more all tried to impede my progress, and all failed. I sent some rockets down to the great beyond, opened a yellow door, and had to fight a whole bunch of shit. Sometime later, I ran into a Cacodemon. These fucking idiot bubbles are the bane of my existence. They are, without a doubt, the worst enemy to fight in Doom. The first encounter doesn't do them justice, as I had quad damage to kill it. The second one, though, he was an experience. The first problem is that they're airborne, which makes it harder to run around dodging their attacks. You run around a pillar to hide, they fly over the pillar. They shoot projectiles at an annoyingly fast rate, and they bite when they get too close. Moving on, I got another health upgrade, met the kamikaze skulls, popped a few more idiot bubbles, fought through another arena, and saw a baron of hell in action. These monstrosities are the bigger, meaner, older brothers of the Hell Knights. They're faster, tougher, and have a ranged attack. If you're not paying attention, they'll fuck you up quick. That said, the strategy used with the Hell Knights can be used on the Barons. In a somewhat open area, they aren't the worst thing to face. With the Barons dead, I arrived at the first part of Doom that really pissed me off. The issue here is that missing a jump, or falling, or slipping off a chain results in death, which means you must start that area over again. That would be fine if it wasn't so time-consuming to kill everything being thrown at me. I got through it the second time by taking advantage of the fact that cacodemons are as stupid as they look. After that nightmare was over, things got worse. The thing about Doom is that it likes variety. If you have to fight a series of demons without getting a checkpoint, they won't send them all at once. They'll stagger them to make things difficult. You won't fight A, then B, then C, then D. You'll fight A, then A and B, then B and C, then C and D, all the while E's, F's, and G's are running around shooting spitballs at you. The problem, of course, is that the pistol sucks. Normally, you get stronger weapons as the game goes on to deal with tougher and tougher foes. But that doesn't happen here. This is a tour de pain, and I've only just begun. This little clusterfuck here took me over 20 minutes to get past. Thankfully, that ended Mission 6. Mission 7 takes us back to Mars and is also back to square one. There's a portal to hell on Mars, again, and it needs to be shut down, again. Luckily, the guy that sounds a little like Ultron has a plan. A few idiot bubbles needed to be laid to rest before the real work could begin. The first step in stopping the second demonic invasion was to knock this box into the abyss. Then I could parkour my way into a destroyed tunnel, pick up a chain gun, spend several minutes killing a wide variety of demons, and meet another new enemy. Pinky is about the closest thing we get to fighting Thomas the Tank Engine in Doom. Like most other demons, Pinkies can be easy to kill or a gigantic pain in the ass. It all depends on how many there are and where you're fighting them. They have a slight charging period before sprinting towards you in a straight line, though they can go a bit to the left or right. In my experience, confined spaces with 3 or 4 Pinkies are among the worst sections of Doom. 
Next was another annoying section involving idiot bubbles, mancubuses, revenants, and more. The fight itself wasn't all that bad to be honest, but I got knocked off a walkway by a communist. Back indoors, there was another lengthy fight with pinkies, hell knights, and a few barons of hell. I then did more parkour, popped a few more bubbles, found another yellow key card, and completed mission 7 by boarding a tram to the UAC Advanced Research Complex. Mission 8 revolves around making your way through the Advanced Research Complex to get to Olivia's private safe space. There's a lockdown because, you know, the demonic invasion and whatnot. After the demons had been cleared, I listened to some story exposition, accidentally killed a demon with a berserker power-up, reloaded a checkpoint because that kind of a monumental fuck-up is not allowed, had another lengthy encounter with a gore nest deeper into the building, I met Samuel Hayden, tried to kill him, failed miserably, saw some pretty shit-looking statues, learned about the Lord Helix Stone, and took an elevator ride into the depths of the facility. It was here that I met the Cyber Mancubus. It's like the normal Mancubus, just bigger, uglier, and more green. The strategy for facing them is pretty much the same as the standard Mancubus. It just takes multiple times longer because they're tougher, more movement is required because they fire multiple shots instead of just two at a time, and they can shoot acid puddles onto the floor. They're not that bad. I then made my way into a pipe and crawled through the air vents until I arrived at the weapons division of Lazarus facility. I spent far longer here than I should have, not because it's difficult, but because, as I've pointed out several times, I'm an idiot and get lost from time to time. And if you're wondering, getting shot by the BFG 9000's test fire will kill you. After a while, I figured out what you're supposed to do, infiltrate a laser infested death pit and steal the most advanced weapon ever devised the big swear word gun 9000. The game then presents an opportunity to show just how devastating the gun is. I'm sure it would have been a hell of a spectacle. I just killed everything with my pistol and moved on. I then found myself in an octangular sort of room with two levels and a few portals. It took a bit to fend off three cyber mancubuses and a few idiot bubbles, but I did it, called an elevator, and things got worse. Passageways sealed themselves off and two barons of hell made their presence known. If it weren't for the portals, this could have been rough. Their ranged attacks can be dodged without much hassle, and they stand in place while doing those attacks. So, they did. I took another elevator ride, and wouldn't you know it, Mission 8 is already over. Mission 9 takes place in Lazarus Labs, where Olivia released the demons from their cells, and things really kicked off in the worst way possible. Moving through a series of corridors, it quickly becomes clear that something unpleasant happened here some time ago. The cannon fodder demons are crushed, a pinky is killed in a pretty confined space, I play in the air vents again, and another gore nest gets destroyed, resulting in a lot of pissed off demons. In these sorts of situations, there isn't a clear cut strategy. You're being attacked from all directions. You can only afford to stop moving for a second or two to take a shot at a demon. The smaller ones can be killed with a single headshot, but the rest of them can't. So you're constantly moving, taking shots when you can, and slowly draining their health before they can be staggered, allowing you to finish them off with a headshot. Clearing this room took me about 7 minutes. Luckily, there was a bit of a breather afterwards, as it was mostly small corridors with possessed. The possessed security are just as annoying as ever. Speaking of annoying, the long ass fights are here to stay. I found this one to be worse than the previous. The area was bigger, but it wasn't one space. It was a series of sections connected via doorways. There were also fast and slow enemies. When all the enemies are fast, you can form a sort of train, leading them all over the place. The mancubuses make that more difficult. You lead a few enemies one way, then the big fuckers cut you off. Eventually, I got through it, faced what felt like an endless barrage of pinkies, entered another elevator, got a few flashes of Olivia having a fun time in hell, learned about the crucible, and yet another circular arena battle began. You can probably guess how this one went. It was time consuming, but not overly strenuous. The idiot bubbles were as awful as ever though. From there, I passed through a friendly looking church, watched a hologram sacrifice another hologram, traversed more corridors, got lost again, dealt with another demonic lockdown that was similar to the first one from this mission, and came face to face with the cyber demon, a dreadful abomination combining both demonic power and advanced technology. This is Doom's first boss fight. The Cyber Demon is sort of like a giant bag of checks mix, just with barons of hell, mancubuses, pinkies, and hellraisers instead of pretzels and whatever else is in checks mix. He's really not that bad of a boss. At the beginning of this video, I said glory kills were not allowed with a few exceptions. Boss fights are those exceptions. None of the bosses can be killed with the pistol alone. 
Their health can be depleted, but glory kills are required because the glory kills trigger a cutscene that progresses the fight. Round 2 of the boss battle is harder because he's got a few new tricks in the gaping hole in his chest. All the bosses in Doom like to use attacks that require you to double jump then immediately crouch to avoid damage. Just like everything else in this nightmare of a challenge, the difficulty has more to do with the amount of time it takes to do damage than it does the fight itself. Dodging the attacks isn't that hard, but because it takes so much longer than it should, the likelihood that you'll make a mistake over the course of the fight goes up, and those mistakes add up. I died once, but I've come this far. I'm not gonna let this stop me from beating the game. The death of the Cyber Demon marked the end of Mission 9. We're back in Hell in Mission 10, this time in a quaint little town called Titan's Realm. If for some reason you couldn't tell that we were back in hell, the fact that the first enemy encountered here is three idiot bubbles would be all the evidence that you need. Then there was a cyber bus, a few suicide skulls, more idiot bubbles, I found a neat trick to get a pinky to kill itself, ran into some green energy, which teleported me into a room with so much blood on the ground. Almost every enemy in the game was thrown at me here, which becomes the recurring theme as we get further into the game. When the dust settled, I got lost for the third or fourth time. I've long since lost track. I quite literally spent 10 minutes wandering around trying to figure out where to go or what to do. I got the last new weapon, the Siphon Grenade, upgraded my max shield capacity, tried to get this giant magic rock to crush a Mancubus, which didn't work because none of my awesome stupid ideas ever work. The silver lining is that I found a blue skull and finally knew where to go. That lining didn't last long. Something so terrible exists that not even I thought was possible. Invisible pinkies. They combine the worst parts of pinkies and the worst of paranormal activity to form an enemy that's not much more difficult to fight than a standard pinky, but is significantly more annoying because, you know, hitting things you can hardly see tends to be that way. It could be worse though. In the PS1 port of the first Doom, there were invisible idiot bubbles. I'd probably kill myself if those were in this game. Pressing onwards, I walked through more great nonsense, got some Doom Slayer backstory, accidentally picked up the Berserk power-up, tried to punch out a candle, killed another hell squid, reached the titan's core, and completed the 10th mission. The 11th mission is called the Necropolis, or the Crucible, depending on what you're looking at. The task at hand is as simple as ever, find the Crucible. The initial sections are shockingly similar to the last level. It feels like ancient grounds where nefarious things took place. A square room with four pillars made the demonic onslaught somewhat trivial to wipe the floor with. Hell squid, idiot bubbles, invisible pinkies, the gang's all here. And just like Woodstock planned to do with the Peanuts gang, I killed them all. There were a series of strange looking handles that needed to be pulled to activate a set of gears that seem oddly out of place. That square room from a few sentences ago has grown up right before our eyes and is now a much larger square room that houses more demons than it did before. The blue skull I found in that room allowed me to grab another handle, activate more gears, the gears above began to turn, and things got bad. Pinkies and their mutated cousins proved to be a real threat. One is easy to dodge, two aren't awful, three can be tricky, and four just sucks in any environment. It gets worse when you add some Ojo, or say, two barons of hell, to the mix. The thing about unexpected variables is that they can behave unpredictably. In this case, while I waited in a corner for the barons, they fucked each other to death off screen. This happens a few times throughout this playthrough. My guess at a reason is that they get stuck on something that damages them and eventually kills them. But that's just a guess. A game guess. Thanks for watching. If you click away now, you won't get to see my suffering reach previously undreamt levels. By now, it should be clear that I despise cacodemons. I hate them with such a passion that they're forever on the list of things that I hate. Fighting three idiot bubbles on a series of small platforms with large gaps between them is thankfully something that only happened once. I mean, it, it took me several attempts, but even a game about going to hell knows to only throw that kind of bullshit at you one time. After witnessing a bit of infighting amongst the demons, I was finally back on solid ground, and could add sweet jumps to my repertoire of tactics to use against the armies of heck. I shouldn't have had as much fun as I did though, because the next bit was also horrible. The only thing that gives bottomless pits and useless platforming a run for their money are incredibly confined spaces like this one. The first demons you face in this space are, arguably, the toughest non-boss demons in the game, the Baron of Hell, and there's two of them and then come two mancubuses. Their fat bodies make moving past them a perilous proposition. Not that you'll have much of a chance to move around them, because as soon as one of them dies, four specters spawn. These four specters were substantially more difficult than the barons for reasons I'm pretty sure I've already mentioned. 
After about 15 minutes of agony, I left the confined space, forever imbued with the fun side effects of claustrophobia, ran out of ways to describe killing demons, got another flash of hell, and the second boss fight began. Just like with the first, all damage is dealt with the pistol, but the finishing blow is a glory kill as required to proceed. Keeping with the trends of this god-awful level, this was without a doubt the hardest part of the game thus far, considering the fact that there are people who have done this fight in Ultra Nightmare mode with just the pistol, I'm going to assume that I'm just being a pussy about it. Despite my bitching, the fight itself is actually interesting. The Hell Guard has a shield that blocks damage, which means you only have a small window of time to do damage, usually while it's recovering from an attack or doing one. Also, I am aware that I could be shooting the yellow orb as it charges, but I didn't know that during this fight. After slowly whittling away at the Hell Guard's health, and with most of mine gone as well, I landed the killing blow by jamming its staff into its face. No, not quite. This is a two round fight, and round two was worse. I was so immediately pissed off when I saw what it was, and after everything I'd gone through in this one mission alone, that I quit the game and didn't touch it for about a week. I'm not making that up for dramatic effect. Here's a screenshot of the folder showing the video files and when they were recorded. Round 2 is worse, it is by no means easy, but I have been known to overreact from time to time. This may have been one of those times. After taking 6 days off from playing Doom and coming back to it, the fight was easier than I made it out to be, partially because I watched someone else do it and learned a few things in the process. For one, shooting the yellow orb as it charges stuns one of the guards and also causes health vials to drop. Once you figure out how to dodge all their attacks, which isn't really all that complicated, the hardest part of the fight becomes its length, because you can only do so much damage with the pistol. About 20 minutes had passed, I died once, drained their health enough to kill one of the guards, which made killing the second one trivial, did a few celebratory teabags, got the crucible, and completed mission 11. Mission 12 takes us back to Mars, to shut down another portal to hell. I got a glimpse at a frozen wasteland, went back inside a building, and had to turn off two security switches. After turning off them both, I spent a while maneuvering around this area, slowly killing all the demons who'd spawned, passed through a series of corridors, got damaged by one of those suicide demons for I think the first time ever, took advantage of the fact that pinkies are stupid, took an elevator ride, and had to destroy four of Vega's coolant pipes. Because I'm so damn smart, rather than destroying them one at a time and dealing with the demons that spawn, I decided to destroy all four and then face the entire army that had come to play. This was a mistake. The only demons that didn't spawn were specters, and the lowest level possessed. But everything else did. Barons of Hell, Idiot Bubbles, Hell Squids, you name it, it's there. There were two problems with my idea. The first is that there was just so much to kill. The second was that, because of the unique layout of this area, not all the demons followed me. So I'd have a few right on my ass as I frantically ran around, only to turn a corner and see a Cybermancubus or something. Eventually the screaming stopped, I rode a train, and the same kind of fight happened again, this time only in a smaller area. These two sections alone took me about 25 minutes. I then destroyed two of Vega's neural processors, overloaded his CPU, there was a flash of light, and Mission 12 was completed. If you're thinking that I seemed to skim through Mission 12, you'd be correct. I did it because Mission 13 is the hardest and most time consuming mission in Doom. Which makes sense, considering we were just teleported into the heart of hell, and it's the final mission of the game. Our goal is to close the well and finally stop the demonic invasion of Mars. To access the well cathedral, three wraith souls must be laid to rest. The first fight, on the way to the first wraith soul, was nothing crazy. That thing I spent quite a while bitching about in mission 11 made its triumphant return here. There are platforms that must be traversed, with a certain death resulting from a missed jump, and idiot bubbles that spawn to ensure you fail. After being killed by them several times, I decided to utilize the speed running technique of just ignoring them. It worked like a charm, and I found myself at the first Wraith Soul. As you probably saw coming since this is the last mission, all three of these Wraith areas are a monumental pain in the ass. Some demonic entity makes it clear that they do not want you to get to the well, so they sent everything they can to stop you. The first one is the least dreadful of the three. Most of what is sent are ravens, pinkies, specters, and low-level demons. It took about 8 minutes to clear out this area and lay the first wraith to rest. The second one is harder. Not only are there more demons in general, but the demons sent are tougher and the area is flatter, so you can't use verticality to your advantage as much. There are several barons of hell, several mancubuses, several idiot bubbles, and more to deal with. The small upside is that you're not facing them all at one time. They're spread out a little. 
This one took closer to 15 minutes. The third one is by far the roughest. I'm gonna spoil things a little by telling you that this was the last battle before the final boss of the game, which would explain why it's such a bitch. I spent more time here than I did in any non-boss battle area of the game. It feels like the remainder of the Hell Army is sent after you here. There are imps all over the place, ensuring that when you're dealing with tougher demons, you still have to dodge fireballs. The first wave is mostly imps, pinkies, and hell knights. Once a fair amount of them are killed, two cyber mancubuses, a few revenants, and a normal mancubus spawn. Most of them are still alive by the time the idiot bubbles and barons of hell spawn. The demons all move at different speeds. Mancubuses are slow, barons are fast. Kaka demons are neither slow nor fast, but they travel in the air. Revenants are quick as well. With the exception of the second or two after jumping through a portal, you're pretty much surrounded no matter where you go. The other problem is the one I've been dealing with throughout this entire challenge. There are no checkpoints in the middle of a fight. I died for the first time after 10 minutes, which meant I had to start the entire thing all over again. Maybe people who play Dark Souls or other challenging games don't find this kind of thing to be off-putting, but I do. This was a pretty big blow to my enthusiasm. Before the fight really kicked off for the second time, I tried to use the Gauss Cannon to shoot myself out of the map, hoping that maybe I could do the entire fight from afar. I'd seen a speedrun where someone used a Gauss Cannon to get out of the map. It didn't work, of course, why would it? So I began the battle again, and used the strategy of not having a strategy. The only thing I purposely did was avoid the quad damage power-up until later in the fight, when I could use it against the Barons and other formidable foes. Not long after I killed the barons, I killed the last Cyber Mancubus, loaded up on health and shield, laid the last wraith to rest, walked into the mouth of a demon, and finally figured out what Olivia had been up to. From her being covered in blood and her pupils being gone, it looked like she'd been having a fun time in hell. But even in hell, static electricity is an annoying bitch. Olivia got a shock, melted into the red slime, and emerged as the spider mastermind. An unfortunate trend with these challenges is that oftentimes the final boss, or final encounter, is easier than the rest of the game, and the spider mastermind follows that trend. Her attacks are similar to the attacks of other bosses. She fires lasers that can be dodged with a jump or a crouch. She fires bombs that explode, causing damage in multiple small circular areas. She fires short bursts of energy that can be avoided by moving the other way. She has a laser that is tough to dodge, but it only does two damage, so it's not that bad. There's also an attack that electrifies the floor. This isn't a mindless fight. It requires effort, and you definitely need to pay attention to what you're doing. But, I don't know. I just expected more. Once her health goes down to about 15%, she slows down and starts frantically attacking in all directions while defending her weak spot. Just like other bosses, she requires a glory kill to be defeated. This one in particular uses the BFG 9000 instead of some melee kill. The spider mastermind is killed. Samuel Hayden reveals, in a twist that everyone saw coming, that he is really the bad guy. He takes the crucible, which he wields like a sword for some reason. I'm sent to an unknown location, and doom is complete. Somebody open the fucking canned peaches because this goddamn nightmare is finally over. Whether I beat Doom with only a pistol or not depends on your perspective. I think I did. I relied on the pistol as much as I could. I didn't melee any enemies. I only used glory kills on the bosses that required it. Otherwise, I killed everything with the pistol that I could. Overall, this was without a doubt the hardest challenge I've done so far. There were maybe a dozen situations that were truly difficult, but the entire game was just exhausting to play. Once the Hell Knights started showing up, every demonic encounter was time-consuming to deal with. If you're looking for a way to make Doom challenging without just upping the difficulty, this is a good way to do that. Otherwise, I wouldn't recommend playing Doom with only a pistol. And that's gonna do it for this video about whether or not you can beat Doom 2016 with only a pistol. If you enjoyed the video or learned anything, leave a like. Leave a dislike if you didn't enjoy the video or didn't learn anything. Follow me on Twitter, at MittenSquad. My name is Paul of Mitten Squad. Have a fucking wonderful day.